Hi, my name is Kristen Wilson, and I'm the project coordinator for ReShare. I'm going to be showing you a demo of our beta software release. Before I begin, I'd just like to acknowledge the work that was done on this release by our development team made up of contributors from Index Data and Knowledge Integration, and also uh, thank the members of the Project ReShare community for all the input that has gone into this release. So to show you our beta release, I'm going to be demonstrating uh, the workflow of processing a resource sharing request from start to finish. And as I do that, I'll highlight the new features that we've introduced in this release. I'll begin the demo here in our reshare shared index. A lot of the work that's gone on throughout the last quarter on the shared index has been largely behind the scenes, so it's a little bit hard to demo, but I did want to call out some of the features that we've completed, including um, coding the match algorithm for records using the specification that we were able to get from the Gold Rush project. Uh, we've also added a lot of functionality for handling deleted records and a lot better error logging so that we can better manage and troubleshoot the ingest process. I do have one feature that I'm going to demo here in the shared index. So we're looking at a record for a title called Sparrowgrass, and we can see that we have one holding here for Temple University. And so I'm going to show you the ILL policy field that we use to determine whether or not this uh, holding can be lent. So I'll click here on View Holdings, and then I'll click the pencil to edit this record. And if I scroll down, you can see we have a field called ILL policy. And right now this is set to will lend. Um, we've got a bunch of default values in here because this is functionality that is borrowed from the Folio system. But from a reshare perspective right now, we're really only using will lend and will not lend as choices. And so um, this basically allows libraries to contribute records to the shared index, but code them as lendable if it's something that they don't want to share. And while this can be set manually from the individual record, uh, we also are working on using our record harvesting process to create some rules to define this field as part of the ingest. So there'll be kind of a default that is set, um, usually based on location, that can be added to these records. And then we, the shared index itself can be used to manage this field record by record later on. So now I'm going to move over to ViewFind, which is our public facing discovery layer for ReShare. And here I'm using an instance of ViewFind that is set up as if I am Millersville University, who is one of our testing partners. And so I've done a search here for sparrows. And if I scroll down, I can find the record for sparrow grass, which is the one we were just looking at in the shared index. And because I know that this is lendable, I'm going to use this as an example of uh, an item that I can request. So I'll click the get it button and that's going to take me to our request confirmation screen. And this is a completely redesigned form for this screen uh, that was done by Philip Jacobson from Samhang and it looks really nice, um, definitely a lot more polished than our previous form. And in addition to just looking nice, we have introduced some new functionality into this form as well. Um, and the primary thing that I'm going to show you is our new functionality around pickup locations. So uh, I can see here that I now have a nice drop down menu for pickup locations. And when I can when I open that up, I've got a few choices here for a pickup location for this item. And so the work that we've done on pickup locations has let us uh, display this and offer people the drop down menu here in the request form. But we've also introduced a system for managing the pickup locations in the reshare system. So I'm going to move over to the reshare staff system itself. Um, this is Millersville University's reshare tenant within our test environment. And I'm going to open up the directory application. And this is where a library can manage its pickup locations. So I'm going to click on the, the directory entry for Millersville. And this is kind of Millersville's high level primary directory entry. And you can see here that this entry has several different units associated with it. Um, so we have one that is for a particular library, but then you can see there's three additional units here that are the same as those three units or those three um, that are the same as those three pickup locations that we saw 
in the request confirmation form. So if I click on one of those, um, this is for the main circulation desk, I can see that we just have some very basic information here about this pickup location. And primarily what we need to know is just the name of the location. And then we have an LMS location code. And this is what we can use in our NSIP calls to be able to place a hold for a patron at a particular pickup location. So I'm gonna open up the tags app here and you can see that this location has a pickup tag and this is a special kind of tag that lets the system know that this particular directory entry should be used as a pickup location. So if I were to delete that and go back over to the request form and refresh, I can see that this is now gone from my list of pickup locations and I'm just gonna go back here and add it back in. And so that makes it extremely easy to create new directory entries for a pickup location, give it the tag and get it into your list of pickup locations. So while I'm here in the directory app, I'm also just gonna quickly show the work that we've done on our directory edit screen. So I'm gonna go back to the Millersville parent directory entry and I can click actions and edit. And this is gonna take me into a form where I can edit some of the basic information about this directory entry. I can add symbols and I can add contact information and addresses for this entry. And we'll be continuing to flesh out these directory entries with additional fields to support functionality going forward. So now I'll return to the request confirmation screen. And I'm just gonna update this again so we've got all of our pickup locations back and I'll choose a pickup location. We also have a nice date selector available to choose a date needed by. Uh, I don't need a specific volume in this case, but I'll just put in a note to say that we are doing some testing and I can go ahead and confirm that request and get a confirmation that it has been sent. So from here, I'm gonna move from the request confirmation back into the reshare system. And I'm gonna switch from the directory app to the request app. And the request app is where we can see all of the requests that have been placed by Millersville's university's patrons within our test environment. And here at the top of the list, we have the request for Sparrowgrass, which is the request that we just placed. So I'll open this up. And from here, I'm gonna show you um, a few things behind the scenes before we begin processing the request. So I'm gonna flip over to the detailed view of the request and scroll down to show you the audit trail here at the bottom. And what I wanted to point out is uh, the transition that's happened from a validated request to having a supplier identified and the fact that we are calculating a lending string um, using what we're calling a ratio ranked lending string. And this is really our um, initial attempts at adding some load balancing functionality into the system. So we're calculating a lend to borrow ratio from each for each library based on their past transactions. Um, and that will kind of give us a sense of whether that library is a net lender or a net borrower. And we also will store a, a goal ratio for each library. And we're just starting off using one-to-one -one ratios to see how well that works out. Um, so if we're looking at a one-to-one -one ratio, that's what we would like each library to have. When we look at the real ratios, we can kind of see who is farthest away from having that one-to-one -one ratio. And we can weight those libraries as more likely suppliers. We are introducing some functionality to kind of soften that a bit. So if somebody gets really out of whack with their ratio, we don't want them to just be overwhelmed with requests. So we'll be kind of grouping uh, libraries based on how far they are from their goals and then choosing within the group so that the same uh, lender just doesn't get hit over and over again. And so we're pretty excited to see how well this will work out, especially when we get our policy pilot group using the system um, with more libraries and a higher volume of requests. I think that'll tell us how successful we've been with load balancing and allow us to tweak the process if we need to. So from here, I'm actually going to switch to a new browser window so that I can look at this request from the point of view of Temple University. And so I'm using a different browser, um, and this one has the purple color here at the top just to try to give some visual distinction to the two uh, different universities who are handling this request. 
So I'm going to open up the Supply app, and this is where we can see all of the requests where Temple University has been identified as the supplier. And here at the top of the list, we have our same request for Sparrowgrass. And so I'm going to open this up, and again, I want to point out something that's happening behind the scenes. And so I'm going to scroll down to the audit trail for the supplier's view of this request. And I wanted to tell you a little bit about the autoresponder that we're using for new requests. So essentially, when a new request comes in to a particular reshared tenant, we can do a Z39.50 query against that library's local library management system to determine if they have an available item currently on the shelf that could fill this request. Um, and if they do, then we'll auto respond to the request saying that they will be able to supply it. And we also will pull a location, a shelving location, and a call number for this item. And that's what we will use on our pull slip so that we can direct the library staff um, to the correct place to go to find an available item. And if no item was available, then we'd be able to auto respond that this supplier was unable to supply and the request could just go on to the next supplier in the queue. So the goal is really to be able to move through that initial process very quickly and get the request to a supplier who's most likely to be able to supply it. So I'm going to switch once again back to Millersville's tenant, where we are the requester for this request. And I'm going to switch over to the flow view where we can do some processing of this request. And so I'm going to demonstrate a couple new uh, workflows that we've implemented that work with the ISO 18626 protocol. Uh, and the first one that I'll show is the ability to cancel a request. So we can see here, this is a, a new request pretty early on in the process. So I have a cancel request option and that will continue to be available to me until the supplier has shipped that request at which time it will no longer be cancelable. So I'll go ahead and choose that option. I can see it was successfully submitted and we've been updated into a cancel pending state. And so I'm going to switch browsers and go back to the flow view for Temple and refresh this. So I can see that a cancellation request has been received and that I have a prompt to respond to that cancellation. So I'll click that button and basically I have two options. I can agree to the cancellation or deny it. Um, I probably will agree to it almost all the time. Really the only reason to deny it would be if somehow the item has shipped without the status being updated appropriately. But having this confirmation step is in accordance with the 18626 protocol. And so we're really wanting to make sure that we implement that appropriately. Uh, and we have also implemented a cancellation auto responder that will auto respond an agreement to the cancellation if the order has not yet shipped. So for the most part, we don't expect people to really have to be processing this manually, but I just turned off the auto responder uh, so that I could do this demo. But in this case, I'm actually going to deny the cancellation just so that we can keep this request active and continue working with it. So um, I denied the cancellation, and so I'm basically back to where I was before the cancellation was requested. And so I'm going to demo another workflow here on the supplier side, and that is the workflow for adding a loan condition. And so a loan condition is a parameter that the supplier assigns to a particular request to govern its use, often for a rare or expensive item. And so I've got a, a dialogue here where I can choose a condition for this item. And so I'm gonna choose use in library only. And then I also have the option to pause processing while I wait for the requester to reply. Um, I think probably that'll be the thing people do most often. Although if you wanted to choose no there, you could actually go ahead and continue processing the request while you wait. So I will add the loan condition. And again, we've got an updated state to show that conditions have been sent. And we've also got this nice red box up here that shows us any loan conditions that have been applied so that every time we come back to this request, we know that there's something out of the norm happening here that we need to be aware of. So I'll switch browsers again back over to the requester side. 
And when I update this record, I can see that um, as the requester, I can now see the loan condition as well. And I'm in a state of loan conditions received and I need to either agree to these loan conditions or I have the option to reject them. And if I do reject them, then the request will just go to the next supplier in the queue. But in this case, I'll agree to them. And so I can see now that that agreement has been sent, successfully sent and we're back to the expects to supply state on the requester side, meaning that this is kind of waiting on the supplier to do their processing. So I'll flip back to the supplier's view. And when I update this, um, I can see that we're back to our awaiting pull slip printing state, which is where we were before, but with the loan conditions applied. And at this point, I'm going to go on and move this request through kind of a more standard process, but we'll see a few more enhancements along the way. So the first thing that I'm going to do is print the pull slip for this request. And this just brings up a printable view and it will also mark the slip as printed so that we know that that has been done. And one additional thing that I'll point out here is just that we also are now showing the condition on the pull slip as well. So that um, as this paperwork travels with the book, we'll know that there's a, an unusual condition that applies to this particular loan. So I'll close out of there, and the next thing that I will do will be to uh, fill this request. And so at this point in the process, if I were in a real library, I would go to the stacks using that pull slip and pull the item and bring it with me to where I'm going to process this. And I would scan the item barcode on that item. But because I don't have the actual item here with me right now, I'm just going to click on this view record link which will take us directly into the shared index and the record for this item. And I can copy that barcode and go back here and paste that in. And so when I click scan, this is just gonna take a few seconds to process. And that's because this is a point where we are using NSIP to interact with a local library management system. And so right now what we've just done is an NSIP check out item message to Temple University's ILS. And essentially what that has done is um, check the item out to an interlibrary loan process within the ILS, which in the case of Temple is Alma. And just to show you a little bit about how that's working, I'm gonna open up another tab and I'm gonna go to um, this URL, which is basically just gives me a way to use Z39.50 to look up an item in Temple's catalog. And so I can see um, we're looking at an item here for Sparrow Grass, which is the title we've been working with. And if I scroll down to the bottom where we have our holdings information, I can see that this, um, this item is now in an interlibrary loan location and that the available now value, which uh, usually a one would be an available, has been changed to zero, which means unavailable. So this has essentially been placed into an interlibrary loan process within Alma. So now I'm gonna to return to the request record in ReShare, and I'm going to uh, go through the next step in the process to mark this item shipped. Um, and before I do that, I'm going to add a note, and this is just uh, demonstrating some functionality that we've worked on over the past quarter to be able to take advantage of the note functionality that is part of the 18626 protocol. So whenever we perform an action that sends a message between the requester and the supplier, we have the ability to add an optional note, and that will be delivered to the other party. So um, I could put a note in here that says something like um, cover is slightly torn. And then I also can scan the request barcode um, and I can just type it in as well and hit the button on that. And so this has now been marked as shipped. And so I'm gonna switch again to uh, the requester's reshare tenant and update this request. And before I begin processing it on the requester side, I'm just gonna open up our messaging area. Uh, and you can see I've got a, a few messages in here that were related to those loan conditions that I was placing earlier on, but I've also got a newer message. And this is the shipping message that I just sent where um, I can see that 
the supplier has shipped this request and added a note, cover is slightly torn. Um, and so that's the note that you just saw me type. And so this is a, a nice feature because we've got kind of a history of messages between the requester and the supplier that relate to this particular request. And I can send those and associate them with particular actions, but I can also just type in ad hoc requests and send those as general messages as well. So now I'm going to receive this item. And so I will uh, put in the request barcode again to do that process. And this will also take another minute because this is another NSIP interaction. And so what we're doing here is using the, the NSIP accept item message. Uh, and what that does is within Millersville's ILS, it will create a temporary item record for the item that is being borrowed, and it will also place a hold on that item record for the patron. And so that process has been completed successfully, and because these records are not visible to the public, we don't have a good way to show this record, but we have uh, talked with Millersville, our testers, and they've confirmed that this process is working for them. And so at this point, um, our request is now in a local circulation process where, where the library will use the functionality of their ILS to manage the checkout to the patron and any routing that needs to happen before this comes back to be completed within ReShare. And so at that point, we would scan the request barcode once again to show that it has been returned by the patron and is now awaiting return shipping to the sub to the supplier. At this point, I'm actually going to close out of this individual request so that I can show a few features that we've been working on that are related to bulk processing of requests. And this is actually also a good point to note that we have also been working on some search and filter options that will be continuing to expand. But at the moment, we've got a, a number of searches that we can do for requests using identifiers, requester information, and item information. And we've also got several filters to be able to filter by state, supplier, date created, and date needed. And so um, in this case, I'm going to go into the state filter and I'm going to choose awaiting return shipping. And so you can see we've got a handful of requests in this state, including the one that we have been working with. And so I'll demonstrate here um, the option that we've added in for bulk pull slip printing, even though this is something that would probably be more commonly done from the supplier side, but you can always print or reprint pull slips as the requester or the supplier. And so from this search results screen, we've got an actions button here. And if you click that, you can see we've got an option to print these pull slips. So if I click that button, this is going to bring up uh, a series of pull slips for the items that we were just looking at. It'll print two per page so that you can cut these in half. And we'll be using this functionality in the future to support pull slip delivery notifications. And those notifications will include a URL that'll basically bring you right to a screen like that where you can go in and print all the new pull slips that are awaiting you. And so I'm going to switch over now to the update app, which is a brand new app that we've introduced with this release that is designed to make it easier to process requests in bulk. And so essentially the way this works right now is that we've got a drop down menu here with a series of actions and you might recognize that these are a lot of the actions that we were doing individually on the records themselves. And so I'm going to choose the mark return shipped action. And so basically what I can do now is if I've got a whole pile of things that I am return shipping, I can just go through and scan all those barcodes um, and be able to perform that action on a whole group of materials. And so um, I actually have printed out uh, those pull slips that we were looking at here at home. So I'm going to scan those so you can see how this works. And so you can see I was able to scan those pretty quickly. Um, they were all, all requests that were in the same state and were having the same transition. So um, we were able to just successfully go through and update all of those to show that they've been return shipped. 
Um, and I'm actually going to scan one of them a second time so you can see what happens if you scan something that you really shouldn't be scanning in a particular situation. Um, since this has already been returned shipped, I'm not able to do that action again. And so I get an error message here um, as well as an error here so that it's pretty clear that something happened with this request that I wasn't expecting. And I've got, can see over here, um, just some general error text, but I've also got a link to go directly to this record. So if there was a problem here that I wanted to go and troubleshoot, I'd be able to do that. And then I could move back to the update app and still have my active session happening here. And so we're supporting this right now for a number of different actions. Um, and we can always expand this as we begin to add more actions into the system or we figure out which context this makes the most sense in. Um, but it really establishes a nice workflow for it being able to do these, this type of bulk processing. And so just to close the loop on all of this, I'm going to switch back once more to uh, our, our Temple University tenant on the supplier side of our request example. And I'll go into the update app and I'm going to choose the complete request option. And so I'm gonna go back through and scan those barcodes again. And so I can see now um, I have got a status of complete for all of these requests, which means they have been successfully returned to the supplier and come to the end of our processing. And so that's it for this demo. Thank you for your interest in ReShare and for watching the demo. If you have any questions about the ReShare project or about the software, please visit projectreshare.org or email info at projectreshare.org for more information.